Hello, I'm Jesse the Sleepy Koala and today I will be doing a tag video. To those of you who are new here, welcome. And to those of you who are returning, welcome back. Don't forget to leave a comment below so that we can have a chat in the discussion and to hit subscribe so that you can see more videos from me going forward, including more tag videos. Today, I will be doing the Canterbury Tales tag, which is based off the Canterbury Tales, which I have not read, but the tag looked like fun and I've seen a couple of people doing it now, so I thought I would give it a try. It is a very long one and I will give a heads up now that the questions are very long and I am not good at memorization, so I will be reading them off my phone. Without further ado, let's get into it. Question number one. The host is a character who relates the tales to the reader. He is large, loud, and merry. Recommend a mammoth book over 800 pages for much of the mammoth. For this prompt, I choose to Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Pellini, which comes in at a grand total of... 800. We keep going and we keep going. Okay, here we go. Grand total of 843 pages in total. I liked this book. It wasn't my favorite. I had some uh, major issues with the ending, though honestly it's been long enough now that I don't even remember what they were. But I really like the setting and I love some of the dynamics in this book. I loved um, so the crew that we meet in this book. I thought they were really great. And there is a romance in here, which I also really enjoyed. Question number two. The knight stands for fighting, war, and bravery. Recommend a book with a courageous main character. For this prompt, I have to go with a book that I have not actually read, but I do intend to read eventually. Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, with the first book being The Eye of the World. Our main character, Rand, definitely a courageous main character. I probably could have guessed that before even watching the TV show, honestly, because I know this is such classic fantasy and that Rand is the main character and main characters generally are like the hero type. So I probably could have guessed that Rand would be like this already, but I saw the TV show and yeah, Rand is kind of the courageous main character. So Wheel of Time is what I would go with for this second question. Question number three. The Wife of Bath stands for marriage, sex, and arguing. Tell us about a book with a strong female character. For this prompt, I choose The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This has not one, not two, not three, but four strong female characters across the entire season. Three of them turning up in this book, one turning up later, and they are fantastic. N.K. Jemisin does a fantastic job at creating very realistic characters to the point that I realized that I didn't actually like any of them by the time I had finished the last book. I loved the book. I thought it was great, and I think they're great characters. I just didn't like them as people, and that takes skill to have characters that are unlikable for reasons, but you still want to read the book because so much rests on the shoulders of the main characters that if you just don't like them, then why are you reading the book a lot of the time? But I know at least my experience with this book, our female leads are fantastic and definitely fit this prompt. Question number four. The partner is all about ambiguity. Tell us about your favorite queer characters. I'm not totally sure how this prompt of ambiguity leads to queer characters, but okay, I'll I'll take it. I'm gonna talk about Magnus and Alec from the Shadowhunter books. Magnus and Alec were probably my first introduction to a gay couple in a book series that I was reading growing up. And if anyone remembers back 2005, there was not a lot of gay couples in books then because it was really still not tolerated, which sucks. Like that really sucks. So Cassandra Clare had to really put them in the background. And I spent so much time picking up the small bits of subtext and overtones that came out of their relationship. And it really colored how I looked at a lot of other works because I would see the same 
overtones the same subtext prop up elsewhere even if there wasn't actually a gay relationship happening but those are the ways that it used to be it couldn't be out in the open it had to be all in the background and you had to really look for it to be able to find the gay couples i'm definitely super thrilled that we've gotten to the point that we could have dedicated books to magnus and elect now following their relationship following their story and I think it's really great. I have read the first of their books in the Elder's Curses trilogy, The Red Scrolls of Magic, but I have not yet read The Lost Book of White. I still have to get to that one, but I'm really looking forward to diving back in because good God, I love their dynamic so much. And just the way that they have grown over the years in the book shows such a good, like healthy development from the point that they were at, um, at one point. So I think they are a really good, couple to look to for what good communication is, how to treat one another, and just how to have a really good relationship. Question number five. The Miller is bold, blasphemous, and overturns conventions. Who is your favorite naughty character? My favorite naughty character is gonna be Kraz Brecker from Six of Crows. He is a uh, definitely not the good guy and does a lot of shady stuff. He's the head of a gang and is just such a criminal mastermind behind some of the plots and ploys that they get up to in this book. There is such a good heist in here and Kaz Brecker is at the helm of that heist. Question number six. The Prioress is modest, quiet, and compassionate. Recommend a book you don't hear much about on booktube. So I know I've gone on a lot about this book recently, or this book series, but the Mirror Visitor series with the first book being A Winter's Promise, I don't see it talked about much, which is really interesting because there's just not that many videos out there about this series. Like I, particularly the later books, because I went looking for them and just couldn't really find anything. There's probably more out there for the first book at least. But the thing is, I see it on people's shelves all the time. So I know that people know this series. I just want to hear more about it. I want to see more people talking about it. That would be great. This book follows Ophelia as she goes to the icy winter courts to be married off to the grumpy treasurer of the land. This book has a lot of political intrigue in it. Ophelia has to figure out how she can fit within this society and how she's going to survive. It's got just such a good romance in it. Oh my god, is the romance in this series so good. I love it so much. So I highly recommend this book. I'd love to see more people talking about it on booktube and just have more of it out there. Question number seven. The monk cares little for the rules of work and prayer. Tell us about an unconventional character. I have no idea. I have spent ages trying to think of what an unconventional character is that I could choose for this prompt and I just could not come up with anyone because I got really stuck on what the idea of an unconventional character is. Like what is an unconventional character? How different does a character have to be to what you'd normally see in a book for them to be unconventional. And it might just be that all of the books that I've read, there haven't been unconventional characters. So I haven't had to deal with anyone like that. But thinking through all the characters that I know or that I could remember, at least off the top of my head, I couldn't really figure out if any of them were unconventional because even the ones that might've been a bit different, they still had things that were normal that you would expect in a character. So I don't have an answer for this one, unfortunately, and I will just have have to move on to the next question. Question number eight. The friar is all about confession. Confess to us. Have you read the Bible, Torah, Quran, or any other religious texts all the way through? No, I have not. I am not religious, so I have not been really exposed to most of the different religious texts. I did have a children's Bible when I was a kid, but I was not really raised with religion, so I have had really no reason to seek out any of these works. And my memory card ran out, but luckily I didn't actually lose anything. I realized just in time. Now we are up to question nine. The summoner is lecherous and a drunk who tries to sound more educated than he is. Tell us about a book that sounded better than it was. I feel like people are gonna hate me for this. Jade City by Fonda Lee. I didn't dislike this book. It was still good. It just wasn't as good as I was expecting it to be. The way people talked about it, it just sounded incredible, but I just didn't connect with the characters. I liked them, but I just didn't connect with them. And I think if you don't connect with these characters, the book's just not as good. 
and I'll go more into this in my February, March, March wrap up. What month is it again? I'll go more into it in my March wrap up. But yeah, this book was good, but not as good as I was expecting it to be. Question number 10. The parson is poor, but rich in thought and deeds. Tell us about a book that gave you more than you expected. Another recent read, Caravel. I guess I was expecting like a fun book when I went into it, but I got so much more than that. The relationships and the characters in this were absolutely incredible. I love the way that Garba plays with different tropes and I, she made me like a love triangle. I mean, that is a difficult thing to do, but she did it. But I just love this series so much and it was just so much more delightful than I was expecting it to be. I was expecting just to have fun. I was not really expecting to like fall in love with these books as much as I did but I really did. Question number 11. The Squire stands for youth, beauty, and courting. What book did you fall in love with when you were a youth? A childhood favorite of mine is Ranger's Apprentice by John Flanagan. I love these books to pieces so much. And I read them so many times when I was younger, when I was a teenager. I reread almost the whole series a couple of years ago. Would have been back in 20... Start of 2018, I think I reread them all and it was just phenomenal. I miss these characters so much and it was like coming home to a friends around a fire where I could just cozy up and hear their stories again and feel what they felt and just go through their lives and it was so good. I really love our characters in this book. I love our main character Will, the mentor Holt, the best friend Horace. They're just fantastic, fantastic characters and they get up to such shenanigans as well. The trouble they get themselves into is insane. So I love this series. It was a great one from when I was a child and it is one that I will still read today and still enjoy just as much. Question number 12. The clerk says little but his words are wise and morally virtuous. Tell us about a short book that made you a better person. This one I have to go with Teach Yourself How to Learn which was such a good study aid to me. Now that I am back studying, this has been so helpful and it has definitely changed me and changed me for the better. Question number 13. The man of law upholds justice and knows the laws by heart. What is a book you could not imagine rereading? I never really think I will come back and reread Nevernight. I am surprised I got through the book the first time and I don't think I'll pick it up again. It is not for me. There, there was a very good twist in it that I did enjoy. I thought that was well done. But there was a lot of other things that I just really disliked. And I honestly found most of the book to be pretty dull and boring. So it's just definitely not my book. Definitely not for me. So I'm definitely not coming back to reread it anytime soon. Question number 14. The Manciple provides the food. Recommend a series you think is good from the first book to the last. Miss Vaughn. Miss Vaughn's so good. It's so good, guys. Everything from the first book to the last book has just incredible world building, incredible characters, incredible plot. I reread the series recently and I think it is incredible. And it's one that I just highly recommend to anyone looking to get into fantasy. This is a great place to start. It's a completed trilogy, though there is a sequel series if you wanted to move on to that afterwards. But the first three books in this are just so good and highly recommend from first book to last book. Question number 15. The merchant deals in furs and cloth and is powerful and wealthy. Recommend a book with a powerful message or theme. I'm gonna go with Children of Time, which had a really good theme of working together. And I think that was shown really well throughout the book. In the different viewpoints, I think one of them showed what happens when you work together well and the other one showed what happens when things start to fall apart but yet they both circle back to the idea that working together really is the key. Question number 16. The shipman is a wine stealing rascal. Tell us about a side character who steals the spotlight. Hoyd. Gotta go. I've gotta go with Hoyd from the Cosmere. Whenever he turns up everyone who knows who Hoyd is or has picked up on the something funky with Hoyd goes 
that's Hoid. It's Hoid. Hoid. And he definitely makes every scene he's in much more interesting because the question is, what is Hoid doing here? Why is he here? What is he up to? So I would definitely say he uh, steals the show whenever he turns up in, whether it be Stormlight, whether it be Mistborn, whether it be in Warbreaker or, or Elantris, any of them, he steals that show and everyone always remembers the Hoid scenes. Question number 17. The physician knows what ails you and can cure it. Tell us about a book you would consider a comfort read. This is another one that comes from my childhood and I think it's a comfort read because of that, but it's Wild Wood Dancing by Juliet Morel? Mo Morelia? Mari... Eller. Marie Eller. I'm gonna go with that. Marie Eller. This book is wonderful. It is full of magic. It's full of sisterly bonds and full of family value. And I just really, really remember enjoying it. And definitely if I was looking for something to kind of take me in and make me feel cozy, this is a book I would go back to. Question number 18. The Franklin is not a vassal or a noble, but a free man. Recommend a book about freedom in any form. I'm going to go with Mockingjay, the last book in the Hunger Games series. I can't go into really any details here because A, spoilers, and B, I have not read this book since high school and don't remember most of it. But I do remember that there was a lot going on in terms of fighting for freedom and trying to break free of the capital's reign. Question number 19. The Reeve is believable on the outside, but lies on the inside. What book was different than what the blurb led you to believe? So this is less a blurb thing. Well, I guess it was a blurb thing because I got this impression from the blurb, but the book Anxious People by Frederick Buckman, I was kind of expecting the book to show the actual incident that was occurring with the robbery and it's not. It tells it by looking back on things through police interviews after the fact. So I was not expecting that. I was really expecting this to be a story of people being held up in a hostage situation on the page in the book. And I did end up DNFing this book, so maybe that did come up further down the line, but I was at least very surprised when I started the book and everything had already happened and we were looking at it in retrospect. Question number 20. The Plowman is good-hearted and faithful. What book do you read over and over again? I haven't read them in a while, but I've got to go with the Cassandra Clare books. The whole Shadowhunter series, these are the base six books. Plus there are the prequel books, there is the sequel series, the Dark Artifices, and like so many more different bits and pieces in it. But I love these books. I love this series. I will reread it till I die and I will always, always come back to it. Question 21. The Guildsmen are five men who act as a unit and stand for brotherhood or sisterhood. Recommend a book with a strong ensemble cast of characters. I did not mean to do this, but I am accidentally doubling up by saying Six of Crows after saying Kaz Brecker earlier, but let's go with Six of Crows because this has got a great cast of characters that work together really well and have such a good found family vibe. Question 22. The cook makes the food that feeds you. Tell us about a book that feeds your soul. So I overthought this one and got really lost in the idea of what is a book that feeds your soul? Much like I did earlier with what is an unconventional character. So I wasn't quite sure what to do for this question, but I went with King of Scars by Leah Bardugo in the end, because I guess I love all the characters in it and I love the story. So I guess it feeds my soul, kinda. I'm. I don't really know. This feels like a bit of a wash question for me. Question 23. The year man serves you. Tell us about a book that served its purpose that did what you wanted it to do. It wasn't great, but wasn't bad. That book was everyone in this room will someday be dead. I read this last year and it was fine. It was a slice of life book that followed a girl who ended up in a situation where she was 
pretending to be someone who she was not. And it was okay. I remember the ending being very open-ended and I didn't like that about it, but I don't remember all that many details about the book now, but I remember it was not good, but it wasn't bad either. Question 24. The second nun talks about a saint's life in her tale. What book do you praise often? Had to sneak it in somewhere. Have to go with the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson because I rave about this book. I am really into the fan community. I am part of the 17th Shard and work on stuff. I work on the Coppermind. I love Sanderson's work and I love the Stormlight Archive so much. So I will recommend this to so many people and I won't shut up about it if you get me talking about this book. Last question, question number 25. The nun's priest is witty and doesn't take himself too seriously. Recommend a book that has a funny or witty main character. I recently finished Project Hail Mary and the main character Rylan Grace is really funny. Like I found him absolutely hilarious. I also found one of the side characters Strat to be really funny and I don't think she was meant to be but she was anyway so I definitely go with Project Hail Mary for funny characters and just really recommend that book because it is so good. Also if you're an audiobook listener listen to it on audiobook because the narrator does so well with the characterization, with the voices. He's very good at accents. I was very surprised and very impressed. So I would definitely say if you like audiobooks and want to listen to Project Hail Mary, go for it. You should definitely do so. So that is it. That That is all of the questions in the Canterbury Tales tag. I hope you all had fun. I know I did. That was definitely a long list, but we got through it. What are your thoughts on my answers? What would your answers be to some of these questions? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to chat with you all. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye!